Make sure you had your tetanus shot. What it lacks in daily, it makes up for in cool points. It's a 66, which I think is great because it has these scoopy things. So I stabbed the distributor in, twisted it around a couple times. Fuel line in the way. How's this supposed to go? Our friend Carl, he hated the Lance Slant 6. Why like is most it? Most of us because he couldn't get to the screen. Okay, okay, there we go. Look at that. Okay. Yeah, that lines up. This is technical. It's all very technical. That, that isn't going to work. There's ants. Ants in my engine. That's the air cleaner ant. Those are engine ants. It's air cleaner ant. Well, it could be engine ants. And he mm. just wandered up to the How do you know it's not an engine uncle? How does it identify? Last time it wouldn't start because it didn't have any wires. And you got the gear shift in nothing. N for nothing. N for nothing. Okay. Alright, this is, this is for nothing. I can smell fuel now. Well, the fuel filter it. filled up and now I smell some fuel, so yeah. I smell a lot of fuel. Yeah. Well. I don't think it's a big deal because the oh. engine's... Okay. You got no wires? The way you go, oh, it's like there's an obvious problem. Oh. <laughs> well, there's your problem. <laughs> you got the important part. Keep laughing, they're cranking, pumping the fuel. There's your problem. Oh, the wires aren't even stripped or anything. You I don't, don't, remember you don't have the box mounting tape or anything. Today, I have... I have a purpose. I want this to be ready to be a going to town rig. Now town is only about five minutes that way. So it doesn't have to be like the most reliable or, or dependable vehicle, but it's been sitting under this tree for a little bit. I replaced this tire and then it went flat again. It's a different tire that's flat now. So that's lovely, but, but, but wait, there's more. This sucker starts up, or at least it did last week. Okay, make sure our battery's hooked up. We're gonna run her off of this Mopar orange box. There you go, she's a runner. Probably I should set the timing. I just, you know, got it so it starts, but I got no idea where it's set at. So I better double check my work from a couple weeks ago. I was angry and haphazard and I'm in a better mood. About a year sitting here under this tree, it's time to roll her around and get some oil in the bearings. The painful part is that washing the dirt off actually decreases the value because it's not pristine barn find. Anyways, we got a running car. We got a sort of clean-esque running car. We got a good look over it and the paint is awful. There's no paint on the roof for some reason. There's just enough primer to keep it from rusting up too much. There's some body work in the back. It looks like someone must have got in an accident and they've replaced a quarter. I still think it's a beautiful car and we've got a lot of performance stuff to do to get it into, uh, you know, like fun. But we might even take this to No Name Nationals. Still soaking wet. Got her stuck in the mud a little bit. I got to clean that up. Paint is pretty rough. You know, the interior needs some work. Exterior needs some work. Engine needs a little work. Give them some road time sometimes. They, they just don't like to be uh, sit too idle. I found a cheap radiator that's supposed to fit a Nova. And uh, the inlets and outlets will be not in the right place. They're really cheap to buy a replacement and they come the next day. So I got that instead of the one that's supposed to fit this car. The same thing, actually smaller, 
costs a lot more money. And that's because Mopar. Voltage regulator, which is this uh, mysterious part right here, because I know it's getting about 15 volts out of that, and it's not supposed to. I mean, there's a lot of room there. I think we could pretty much mount anything that we could get hoses for. And then uh, the carburetor needs taken off and rebuilt. It's got a miss, and it runs kind of odd. And those intake manifold gaskets are prone to failure, and this one has been on there for a long time. And I'll bet it's it when it was put on there, it was probably the cheapest one they could get. Because right now you got to really rev it up to get it going, and uh, that's that's not how you want to get it going. Oh man! Ready? Yeah. Holy moly! That was huge. Are you having fun now? Are you in a little better mood for the, some? We got the fire going. Sometimes you just have to burn it up. Well, that's why I carved all that out was to have a fire there. Yep, and we picked the dampest day of the year. You couldn't light any of this. How does American start a fire with gasoline? It, it sure does work, huh? The Europeans make fun of us because we do that. But you know what? It's soaking wet out here. And we got old gas we can't get rid of. So we're getting rid of it. And we got old oil we can't get rid of. So. Well, the old oil we can burn safely in the yeah, fireplace. Yeah, soak uh, kindling with it. It'll but the old gas is so unpredictable. It might be really volatile, or it might be like putting water on a fire. But the oil is predictable, it's stable. Had water on the top. Yeah. So I just poured it in, and it, so a little water went in there too. Fair. But that kept that got that burning all those sticks and leaves and old crap. Well, that's parts of the old shed that got caught on fire, and yeah, rot half old, rotten wood. Old and beehives that are broken. Broken, and, destroyed. And That'll make ashes that we can use for fertilizer or something. True. The electronic one. This gasket dried all up. Moisture got in it. Yeah, this one's toast. All the metric stuff. You know, we don't need any wrenches yet. Just set it in there. Okay. All the metric wrenches. It's gone. Must have been working on something metric. Yeah, we were working on metric stuff. How small is it? How small is it? I got some wrenches here. Ten millimeter? Oh yeah, I got lots of ten millimeters. Here's one. So we'll have to splice hosing. Hosing's gonna be a thing. You took it away. I didn't even get to look at it. It's hard to hold it in there. All right. You want me to hold it in there? Jim? No, I'm done. I'll, I'll, I just have to set the recording down. Keep it here. Keep it here. Keep it here. I want to look at it. The time to bring it back to a standard where it's going to function exceeded the cost of this. It, it doesn't seem possible to build a brand new thing for halfway around the world and ship it here is cheaper than just tinkering with this for a little while but it is that's just the way it is I, I don't i don't make the rules the thing that we don't have this is the linkage it's not a cable linkage on these old cars it's a bar that goes through and it twists this doesn't have it so little a miniature death wheel on a dremel and i'm gonna lock this this thing off at this angle against the face there and then i'm gonna drill or somehow remove those pieces take this off and and put it on here nobody is ever going to be so desperate that they're going to put that back on a car never ne never 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 clamp it on there for a second with a pair of ice grips and put two tack welds on it and then we'll be done the reason i bought this one was because it was the cheapest so we'll see how that goes
It's not half as dangerous because it's little. It's twice as dangerous because you're not as careful. You could overfill the bowl. I don't know. It smells like gas. It catches on fire. There isn't much there. That's the spirit. It does, and that set the choke. Excellent. Oh, battery. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Problems. Yeah, now you got a huge mess. Maybe there's no float. Maybe there's no needle. <laughs> Maybe there's no seat. Okay, off. I took this plate off trying to figure out what this is, and I realized that this is not the fuel inlet. That's the vent. This is the fuel inlet here. So I need to get a fitting and this is like the overflow vent kind of thing. So maybe it's the charcoal canister. Anyways, there it is. It should not give us grief now. Just hold it about half throttle. No leak. Yeah, it is. Okay, can't run it too long with no cooling around. I think that's a runner. Sure is. There's the bed to a Ranger. And there is the rear frame to a Ranger. We pulled this uh, rear end out of it. It's got a little bit quicker gear ratio. That will fix problems with brakes, problems with bearings, and it will give us a bolt pattern that we can use so we can upgrade from 13 to 14 inch tires. Perches are above rather than below and they're a little wide so I'm gonna have to get different perches and put them underneath, but I think we can fabricate that. We've got welding stuff. Look, we've packed up the mellow yellow cans. We're gonna take them to the recycle center. We're, we're doing all the things. We got the dart in the air, the rear end is out. Okay, we got it setting over here so we can get our measurements. All right, there is the, the factory, 323 uh, years of this seven and a quarter. According to the tag, are 345s. They're not too much different. Not too much different. And we measured and they, from, this surface to the other side, and from this surface to the other side, are 56. You think there was some type of they agreement? Were, were, what were they? I thought it was like 56 and a half. They're identical, I know that. They're identical. Right, yeah. Ford to Dodge. That's a... Ford Ranger? 88 huh? Ranger and a 66... Dodge Dart. Dodge Dart. <laughs> that one looks beefy, even though that's only a seven and a half, which is the baby... Little baby to an 8.8. .8. I mean, it's got to be stronger be than this little to run thing. Slant six. Well, these are the the weakest part of this, as they say, is those little um, spiders. Spiders will shatter if you hammer on it. So, is that making noise going straight ahead? Yeah, it roared all the time. What are you gonna do? It's it's old. I'm not rebuilding that. You know, I'll make this work, and then if I have problems, I'll rebuild this. Because you know what I can get for this rear end that I can't get for this rear end? I don't know. Pause attraction. The only way to get dual wheel spin out of this is to weld those spiders. They made a pause attraction back in the early, early 60s, but they're ultra rare. Can you this I can buy from somebody brand new off the shelf. This is a Ford rear end. We're putting it on the dart, but we got to make it so it 
it's correct. We know it's seven degrees, and so I've got a smart level zero to this, and we want this seven degrees this way. We're right there. I'm gonna put a tack right here, and then we can still adjust it a little bit. Pretty darn close, seven one, yeah, we're, we're good. Okay, that's really good. Looks welded. I think it's strong enough. Good work. Thank you. Right, you're on the pin. It won't move. Yet. Now it's in. I don't know. It was, it was, but you got it unclear of the pin. The backing plate was stuck on the pin at first, but you got it fixed. Oh, it's in. It's on the pin. What about the other side? Not yet. Okay. No, well, now we'll know. Now we'll know if it's right. I'd say it's right. Looks pretty freaking good to me. <laughs> it's there. You say the length will work about right? This one is the one that come out of the 66 net just now, and this is the Ford. Now this is the attachment for the Ford rear end. So we need this part, and then on uh, this end, you see that the dart is a bit longer. It is too long to fit in the car now. And uh, this isn't the right yoke, but we think we can reuse this and put this into this and then I it will be... Can, I think we have to use the original dart U-joint. We'll go into that Ford drive shaft. We're going to try. There it goes. And so uh, we got room on the... That looks about right. I'm good with that. And then if you look up in the... It fits. I mean, that's... It's pretty damn good. That's pretty good. That fits perfect. I, I don't wanna I don't get too confident, but it's 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 looking good. That's gonna fit. Good. Today we're going to go back to looking at the cooling system. We're waiting on a uh, a pulley for the fan, but we know where it's going to be and the place it's going to be is entirely too close. It's bigger and thicker so that it will have an insane amount of additional cooling than we should ever need. Uh, if you're overheating after that, then there's something wrong with your engine tune or head gasket, something like that. Anyways, we have this huge radiator. This is dimensionally from a Nova, so it should be able to cool a 305 or 350 stock type engine which is you know way more cooling than this 225 slant 6 should ever need but it is a little big for the compartment where we are trying to put it but not so much so the dimensions are actually really similar uh, but we're going to take a look at what we need to do or what we want to do to make it fit in there i don't have a problem with modifying this car to for it to meet my needs why is it so much cheaper because of volume Right? They have to go out of their way to make a smaller radiator to fit into this. So we're just going to modify the car to work with the bigger radiator. And then we get benefits for our labors. I thought about modifying the aluminum radiator. But the problem with an aluminum radiator is you need to TIG weld. And although we have the equipment, I don't have the expertise. I want to modify the front of the car so that it will fit this nice big radiator without any conflict and we can put a, a like a really standard common fan shroud on this we'll get more cooling than we ever thought we needed uh for on a budget but we're gonna have to put in some work we're gonna have to do some you know use some fabrication and uh, work out how to make this fit good because somebody who knows Mopars will look and see that it's been modified, but I don't want it to look like hack work. So I want to see how I can sort of disguise the changes that I make down underneath mostly uh, to the lower part of the cowl. 
you could see, I mean, it, it fits in the compartment. It fits in that location. It's not too tall. Um, it is just barely wider than the factory mountain. And I don't like how it sits out in front, but if I bring it back, it doesn't really have too much to, there's about, well, you could see there's a space there and I want to come back into this gap. I want it to fill this gap and that will give me all the room I need to mount a really good fan. This front grill support, okay? And these bolts kind of, the radiator hits these bolts first but it also kind of hits over there at the radius at the bottom uh, where this piece comes down. And this is just, this tacks onto the frame. It supports the radiator. I guess it probably adds a little bit of rigidity to the front of the car. You can't even really see it from underneath. You wouldn't really know the difference unless you were laying on the ground. My thought is if I cut here, across here, and then up here, and then shave this side. I'm not even gonna take the bolt holes off. I'm just gonna shave the metal. Then I'm just gonna put a little whoop right in here. I'm gonna bump this forward. I only gotta move this a half inch at the bottom, so it's only gonna be a quarter inch of change at, at the bracket. Um, put it back together all solid, splash some paint on it, and the only thing you'll ever notice is that it's got fresh paint, I think. I'm smart, I take the guard off the death wheel and make sure that the blade is going to shoot the sparks away from me. Hopefully there's no gasoline left over from last night. Careful! Oh, but we're doing so good. Yeah, it's actually less dangerous. We're doing good. Crack it forth a little bit. Soften it up. They're aligned. But if you look over here at the amount of space that's there versus the amount of space that's there, it doesn't really look right. And this is cockeyed, so that makes the whole thing look crooked. But I assure you I measured, and that's about as square as anyone can reasonably expect to get out of uh, the, the geometry that's going on here. That, that's going to give us what we need. It's going to give us spacing to put these bolts in still. These are the ugly welds that I put over there. I uh, didn't burn through, but it's such thin metal I should do better. I think I got to turn a welder. I think I'm going to turn a welder down and make little smaller tacks. And I'm not going to show you because it's, it's horrific. I had one good weld this week. That's, that's all I get. That turned out, you know, about as you can expect. I mean, that's practically factory welds. And that just come right off of there. And uh, yeah, I mean, okay, no, it's really hideous, but it's strong. I'm gonna do something to bridge that gap to make it a little less uh, wonky. But uh, you know, I think I think that'll work. That'll work. If I was a nine to five welder, I would be very ashamed of that. But I am not. I am a cheap shop welder, but uh, that will that'll stay together. The radiator mounts on the sides, not on the bottom. So I made a mark with a sharpie uh, to give me courage because it's a little scary. I'm gonna be cutting like this. It's gonna be throwing sparks at me, so I have to be a little bit extra careful. But if I try and throw the sparks down, I'm in the battery tray, and this battery tray I was looking, and it's never been out. If it was you, take the battery tray out so you have room to throw the sparks away and down, or take the bumper and grill off, which, you know, I'm not going to do that. So, you know, that's a dangerous, dangerous tool, but man is it useful, but be careful. I'm on the 66 Dart tonight, changing a flat tire. While I had the wheel off, I checked the bearing. That grease has some sparklies in it on this front wheel bearing. So I inspected the race real bad. All you can really see is grease. It's kind of shiny. Parts cleaning solution. We'll just break that grease up. Okay, about a minute of agitation. And let's see. Oh yeah. That's pretty bad. 
Uh, you should not have that much sediment off of a single wheel bearing. It is utterly failed. Okay, we're gonna push the brake. Hold it, stuff's falling. Okay. Is okay like go? Or okay? Yeah, okay, like go. It's moving. Stop. Put it back. Didn't re it didn't return. Didn't return. Okay. So you've got to push it back. I've got the primary shoe wedged, so it can't move easily. It should just move the second. Okay. Way. Primary wedge. Go. Okay. It moved. It came. Not much. Yeah. Okay. And it returned. It moves. It's perfect. Okay. That one works. But the cards and the handles and everything are here. The dash pad has been removed to be repaired and so have the vents. So it's a little bit bare. But it's got three pedals on the floor. That's right. This here's a three on the tree, which makes for an interesting contest at the racetrack. Look at that sleek 60s styling. Before we can take it to Sykeston, it needs a good shakedown. It has hardly been driven since repairs have been done, and it was sitting for quite some time. And I think with a set of tires, it could be a go-into-town rig already. Under the hood, it has a one-barrel uh, aspirated 225 slant 6, which will give it a whopping 110 horsepower, more than enough to get to Sykeston and down the track. After all the years of hard work, this old girl deserves to get to the track and show her stripes. My Dart has custom upgraded electronic Mopar ignition system, which would give it precise timing to make sure it's running at its peak performance. I'm going to try and take this out. It is running. It runs okay. Lights work. Engine goes. Got the... Uh, Ford rear end in it now. It hasn't been more than a hundred yards in a in a clip yet. So, well, let's see how far we get. Uh, far we get. Well, let's get some gas in this girl. You know, it's been a long time coming. All right, we're at the grocery store. How'd we get here? Drove the '66 start. It's a grocery getter now. It's a grocery getter. I love it. Yeah, we rode up here in it. Dodge with a Ford rear end. Good deal. These are the used tires and wheels. Uh, they look better on video than they do in person. They definitely have some rust. We're gonna see if we can get this rust stains off of what's left of the chrome. And maybe they'll look okay. I'm gonna use Scotch-Brite and some oil and then uh, we'll polish them up. We'll see if we can get uh, a fancy, crusty kind of appearance out of them. So, that's what they look like. That's what came off. I think this is a valid decision. Those tires have, uh, well, they've done their duty, and these new tires are going to work out great. A 66 Dart has a bench seat. This one has been well worn, recovered, and well worn again. We might throw a blanket over it, I think, before we take it to a car show. Greater, I love, 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 love this pattern. This corner, I hate, I hate, because I did a bad job. It's going to be something like, like that. What do you think? Wow. What do you oh. think? Oh, yeah. The vinyl just needs to be cleaned a little. And well, a lot. New fabric is... Oh, the other one, just that hole, is just a big hole. Oh yeah, compared to... Oh yeah. Alright, he's entertaining the live stream, but I can't help but record what I'm doing here. We did some, made some changes. Uh, we, we redid the primary wire, uh, so this is much more stout because we haven't had any problems, but we don't want to have any problems. Additionally, we ran this here. This is a relay, and it is going to power uh, this fan, this electrical fan here. And this is a heat soak fan. It blow through and past everything here to keep uh, heat soak in the summer uh, at the racetrack when you're starting the car, running it hard, and then trying to shut it down. So anyways, I, I ran the power into here to a toggle switch. I want it to be toggle switch actuated, 
And uh, we were doing good. We're all the way to here. And all I need to do is plug this sucker. See, look, I, it's got its own fuse, toggle switch. It's pretty much ready to go under the dash here. Um, and uh, I went to uh, feed from the electrical box, and I noticed that the electrical box is horrendous. It's really bad. Look at the, the rust on those upper terminals. I don't even know if I have the time to rewire the dash right now. So maybe we'd do a fix with the Dremel tool and then we can patch our fan relay in. Uh, but yeah, I just thought I'd show you what's going on there. The rest of the car, I, I really, I like the car. This new seat is looking good. Uh, oh, maybe we'll get be able to fix the horn while we're at it there. Um, and maybe we'll have dash lights and stuff like that. No. <laughs> it is, it collapsed. And then um, having an issue here where there is a fresh puddle of what appears to be gasoline leaking from the tank. I hope we don't need a fuel tank. It looks like it's leaking out of the... Oh, I don't know. I can't tell while we're here, but it's leaking tiny bits of gas. The best thing we can do is get it home and get it drained out so it's not leaking anymore. That would explain why we ran out of gas. And now that we've got a full can. I'm driving home unless you want to. Do you want to you drive know, home? No, I want you to drive home. All right, we're well past patina or any chance of getting another good shine out of this paint. I can't even get this garbage off of here with a with soap and a rag. So I'm resourced to using as gently as possible using this scuffy pad and I hate to I know that's a sore it's, it's the end it's the end for this paint I gotta use a scuffy pad we'll put some wax over it and shine up the patina I don't even know what that's called it's ruined destroyed if you look down here you see these spots I don't even know what those are but they're just places where the paint didn't stick. Maybe some kind of garbage got in there, bird poop or whatever, and destroyed it. There's a lot of it. There's more bad than good. Just try and encourage people. Keep it going. Okay, that's going to come out better. Yeah, that'll come out. I don't know. It's going to look like a ruined paint job on an old dart. There's some bad body work up here I found. Catch can and an oil change and then send it driver's side the chrome is all eaten off and uh so the rust what happens is when it pops through it spreads so there's a little bit of chrome left there so we're just gonna get rid of as much of the rust as we can i mean there's no polish in that we're gonna get it rid as much of the rust we can so you can see what chrome is there and i'm gonna try and use a wire brush i know that sounds horrible and it is Chrome is a lot harder than a wire brush, so if it's there, the wire brush probably won't take it off. And you see, it looks more like chrome. It also looks like red rag. I could also use some wet paper. Little pieces of chrome can be pretty sharp. So it's not like I can do anything wrong. And I'll hopefully put something on here slow it down from rust and some kind of patina sauce maybe to keep this rust from spreading back out again but the damage is done you see how much rust is underneath this chrome y'all are hating me i don't like me that much either maybe we'll use a scraper if it ain't gonna stick i don't care all right let's hit it with the brush again. 
magic snake juice. Come on, snake juice, rejuvenate the chrome. Oh yeah, excuse me, check it out. There you go, shiny, check it out. It's like metal flake. Because it's literally flakes of metal falling off. I guess that wasn't wet sandpaper. Oops. All right, a little more of the magic juice, and by that I mean water. It's just water. Make the rest run off. I like to pre-fill my oil filter. You pour it down the center and at least soak the cartridge, right? What idiot? would put a filter on that thing. It's me, I'm the idiot. So you got the stuff. <clears throat> it is a high quality piece of junk. But hey, you know, I mean, we're going on a what, a 180 mile trip? <laughs> it's ought to be okay. Kim made it out of a, an air conditioning uh, um, filter dryer from we, Ford. Well, this is a new feature. She we use the blow-by from the engine to run the evaporator for the air conditioner. It's, it's, <laughs> it's high. So anyway, it, it, if there's any uh, drip from the blow-by, which there is, it'll go into that thing and and then it'll get sucked up into here, maybe, into the air cleaner area. And so some of it will go down the down there and get burned. And, and some of it will get trapped in that can and we can empty the can after a while. But we won't be emptying the, the blow-by mess on the track, which is the important thing. This is what we got. And I'm one of these old-time... Runs. It's evolutionary. Yeah, evolution. There, yeah, it's like dinosaurs. Your, uh, I'm, I'm old school. On these old engines, I always run an SAE 30 or SAE 40 straight. And, you know, it's still warm outside and it's an old loose engine. And uh, you know why I bought it? I don't know. Because it was the cheapest. Why? Because <laughs> it was the cheapest. cheapest. Okay. But no, it was on sale. For sixteen dollars for two and a half gallons. Okay, then you know you trolls out there, you can come in and call us a dipstick if you want. We're running the wrong, wrong oil. That's the wrong oil. You're gonna it's, blow it up. Yeah. It's the wrong oil. You don't even add any zinc. I thought we were gonna do the alignment. Is we jack the front end up enough that we can get the tires off the ground and spin them, and then you take a piece of chalk and you make a line. You spin the tire and make a line down the middle of the tire because you can't trust the tread being straight and then you have a point to measure to and you measure front to back or you measure the back side to side and then you measure the front side to side to see what the toe is okay now we have to chalk the wheels the wheels are chalked and now he's going to use the chalk, chalk to chalk the to wheels chalk. and you have to have a place to measure to and if you use tread that'll never work or it probably won't work if you what we're going to do is put a, a chalk mark down the middle of the tire so you're bracing your hand with a piece of wood you're spinning the tire putting a chalk line on it pretty straight okay we're gonna do the other side we've got the we've got the lines on the tires down the center of the tires you can see that you can see that okay first time driving the dart at night uh that alternator doesn't do anything it's not connected to anything the uh, speedometer never goes past 20 miles per hour, even when you're going 55. The fuel gauge is lying. There's two gallons of gas in the bottom of the tank, and it says three quarters tank again. And the temperature gauge never comes off of the bottom of the thing. The oil light does come on when the engine stalls, so we have, there's that. We know we have all the lights. There's no high beams, but there's low beams. Uh, so, and there's no interior lights. It feels like flying blind a little, but I mean, we're getting there and I, I'm a little bit nervous about taking it out, but you know, like you gotta start someday. You gotta do it someday. So today's the day, tonight's the night. Why is this so tight? Is it the wrong size holes? Maybe, yeah. Oh yeah, I can see where it's all stretched out. No, it was flared. It was a... It was a 
big on one side, small on the other side hose. That's why I bought it. That hose and radiator is like new. Yeah. All right, here. You need a couple of gorillas to get that off there. Why did this happen? I don't know. Here, take. I know camera. what I'm doing. I do this all the time, and we're gonna video it so it can't come off. This is my manic phase. If any of you weren't aware, uh, I saved the best for last. I love my car. Don't get me wrong. I want it to be wonderful, but I don't have the time to do what's required here. And I. You know, the whole time I would have liked to have done this, but I knew that I really needed to... Oh, look at the woobly, woobly, woobly there. I knew that there was going to be a lot of sorting, and that I just had to... Focus on that. Focus on the sorting. Yeah, just... just Fill that hole, but don't not so much so that it just drips back out, right? All right. Well, oh, that looks so bad. Okay. Not quite enough is perfect. You want to still be able to see, like you don't want to put it on so heavy that it's going to run, because then you're really going to hate life. I used most of this. Two thirds, good two thirds of this can on that. I'm gonna open a door, get a little bit of air moving around in here. Oh yeah, she's mint. Except for there, and there, and there, there, that's not bad. No, that's definitely, yeah, that's bad. There's a, this whoop de whoop there, and there's a, a hole right on through in there, and there's a nice big boom, boom, boom right there, and there's some rust there that I didn't do anything to. And that right there is just, yeah. So, first coat, you know? We're gonna give it a couple minutes. Just let it gas out a little bit. Just, just let, the, just let the, the air hit it, you know? I might even bring the heat gun out and just, just blow on it a little bit. Get it, get it nice and tacky. And then I'll, put, I'll bring it back and put some little bit of, little darker color. I think this, this is too dark. And this is, is too light. So should I go light or should I go dark? You know, these are the questions that we have to ponder. But I'm almost out of this paint, so we're going to go with this. <laughs> and that's going to be okay. It's, it's going to be all right. You know, they'll know we tried. They'll, they, they won't know what we tried to do, but we'll know we tried to do something. And something is different than nothing. I mean, it's, it's just... I don't know what it is. I don't know. It's it's different. It's more it's it's more painted, you know. If I put the trim back on, it will look less rusty. Less rusty is okay. This looks horrible. I I am ashamed. I'm embarrassed. But the, you know that's okay. That's okay because it runs. If we even make it there, people are going to be like, "Wow, you drove here in that." Hey. <laughs> on the way to site today. Dodge Dart, 1966 Dodge Dart, followed by a, uh, a Mazda 6. We have, uh, my GPS says we have 156 miles to go. How's your brake thing you looked at? First full fuel stop. It's hanging, but it's not dragging, so. It's good, okay. There's nothing else I can do with it right now. Uh, when we, we'll, we'll use extra zip ties later on. And okay. then we have fuel gauge, it is buried on full. That's good, so you know it works. So yeah. It starts coming down. Where was it before? It was uh, like quarter tank. Okay, so when you get down a quarter tank, you know you need 10 gallons. Yeah. Okay. I want to be on the phone until we're moving on the highway and comfortable. Okay. 
I've never had it on the highway. All right. What? Got to go get the wiring diagram and the duct tape. You're done? You're really done? Okay, so how do I turn this off? M or O? I don't know which button. I push buttons and nothing happens. 